In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run a particle residence time simulation in MuFES. Now, this is assuming that you already know how to run MuFES simulations. So if you don't already know how to do that, uh, you could watch that tutorial first. So the particle residence time that we will get from this simulation is the RT1 parameter that is in the paper referenced, uh, referenced in the video description. Now, the basic concept of this RT1 parameter is this. So let's say you have a fluid domain of some sort, right? So flows flowing through, uh, fluids flowing through this, and a particle can enter this fluid domain. Now, as soon as the particle enters this domain, we can start to calculate how long the particle has spent inside the domain. And so let's, let's say a particle comes in and you know, it goes wherever it goes. Um, and all throughout its path, its age is going to increase, right? So, and let's say you, know, you have an infinite amount, number of particles that is going into this domain, then at any given time, I can look at any spot in this domain and there will be a, a particle there. And that particle will have some age, right? And I can look at a different spot and there's going to be a particle there, and that particle will have a, a different age. So at, at any given moment, uh, I could obtain a map of the residence time in this entire domain. And so that is what we're going to be calculating uh, with the simulation. So there are uh, kind of two ways that you can run these simulations. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is you're basically trying to calculate particle residence time in the entire fluid domain. And so let's just say if this is my uh, fluid domain and flow is coming in here, then uh, the first method we're going to do is as soon as the particle enters here, the age is going to start counting, right? So the clock starts ticking as soon as the uh, particle comes into this entire domain here. So that's the first method. Uh, the second method that I'll show you is uh, if you wanted to select some subdomain where you only want to count the age or the time that is spent in that subdomain, uh, that's what the second method does. So let's say, you know, if I select a, a small portion in this domain, um, let's say uh, I only want to know the residence time in this region, this subdomain, then I want to select this subregion where the particle can come in, uh, but the clock for its age is not going to start ticking until it comes into this subdomain. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of uh, problems with this pen here. Okay, um, so, so as soon as the particle comes in here, the clock will start ticking, and as long as it stays within this subdomain, uh, its clock will continue ticking, and then as soon as it leaves, then the clock will no longer tick. And so uh, this is the second method uh, where you could have the particle's age only increase when it's inside this subdomain. So that, that is the second method that I will show you. To run a residence time calculation for the entire domain, so this is the first type of simulation we're going to do, it's actually extremely simple. So all you have to do is to add in this equation uh, block to run the heat F equation. So this is essentially runs a advection diffusion simulation. And what you're going to do is you're going to set the conductivity to some very small value. So basically, you know, close to zero. And this essentially turns the diffusion off. So we're only doing advection, which is particle tracking. And then you're going to set the source term to one. And then everything else, uh, all the boundary conditions at the inlet, outlet, and the wall, you're going to set to zero. And that's it. So once you have that, you could go ahead and run the simulation, OK? So I've already run the simulation before. And let's take a look to see what the results look like. And so here's our geometry. And what you want to look at is this temperature term. And so the temperature here is essentially your, uh, your residence time. So these values are in, in units of seconds. And so if I um, take a slice so you can see what's in between. And let's look at the temperature. And what you're seeing here is, you know, you flow comes in here, so the particle enters here, and as, as soon as they enter, the, they start to age. And so these uh, colors tell you the, 
the age of the particle at any given point. And what we're seeing here makes sense because the flow is faster near the center and it's slower on the sides. So the particles on the side will have a, a larger residence time. And also the flow comes in here and so as it uh, goes towards this end, the right end, the particle has stayed in the domain for longer time and so uh, the residence time near the right side is going to be larger. All right, now let's look at the second type of residence time simulation where you only want to calculate residence time in a subdomain in your fluid simulation. So the first thing you need to do is to generate a list of cell IDs for the cells that will be in your subdomain. Now you could do this however you want, but I will show you two ways you could do this with Paraview. So here's what we need to do uh, with the first method. So you're going to use this select cells through to select, just randomly select some cells uh, on your geometry. And then you're going to clear this. Now, don't ask me why I have to do this. It might be a glitch in Paraview, but this is step you have to do to, for the rest of this procedure to work. So after you've done that, then you can now go ahead and select the subdomain that you want. And you could do this with uh, any of the Paraview uh, functions. So I'm going to just say, uh, use a sphere here. And so I want to choose a, a subdomain um, with a sphere. I'm going to clip it out. Okay, so let's just say, you know, I want something like that. And I'm going to apply the sphere. And so now this is my subdomain. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to click on this thing right here and choose spreadsheet view. And I'm going to select, make sure that you're showing the, the clip that you just took and then cell data. And then you're going to get all of these, uh, this data. And so this is, this is the information you want, which is the VTK original cell ID. And so what we're going to do is going to export all of this into a spreadsheet here. So I'm going to export it uh, with this button here. And uh, I'm going to save it, call it subdomain.csv. So it's exporting as a CSV. Now, before you exit Paraview, I highly recommend that you do this. So I would go back to this window and save state of the current Paraview state. So we'll call it state one. And the reason you want to do this is because, you know, once you've exited and then you've got your subdomain, you run your simulation, um, you want to know where you actually select it. So in terms of your subdomain so that you could do future analysis for that portion of your geometry. And so uh, you want to save the state. So in the future, you could go back and, and load the state and then everything will, uh, will come back that you could reference to. All right, so that was one way that you could generate these cell IDs. I will show you the second way that you could do this with Paraview, and it's uh, somewhat similar. So uh, you could just select the cells through directly with this if you just want a rectangular uh, type of shape. So let's say I want to select these particular cells. Uh, and then once I select them, you could go here, spreadsheet view, and just show the uh, only the selected elements and then choose cell data. And here are the cell IDs that you want. And so the same thing, you export it and then clean it up, then you have your uh, cell ID list file that is ready for the solver to use. Now, the way that you can save these selections for future reference is you could go back here to this window and then you could go to filter and data analysis and uh, let's say extract selection. Okay, so now you have your selection extracted and uh, you can save this uh, as a pair of view state. So you can save state and let's call it state two. And so in the future, if you want to go back and analyze this, you know, after your simulation has completed running, you want to analyze uh, the region, the subdomain um, that you've selected, you could go back here um, and then use this to uh, analyze your results. So you, you remember uh, what you actually selected. Once we have that list of cell IDs, what we need to do is to clean it up so that the solver can read it. So you can open it with whatever program uh, that will read CSVs. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete everything except the only thing we want is these original cell IDs. So I'm going to delete this column. This we don't need. And 
this header row I'm going to delete. Okay, so so this is the only thing I have is the actual cell IDs. So I'm going to save this. All right, so once we have that saved uh, and processed, then we're going to go into the configuration file for the simulation. So what we're going to do in this file is first we're going to add the path to that file of list the list of cell ID files. So you know you put in tag file path and then you just put in uh, the path the relative path of wherever you save that file so that the solver can find it. And then uh, in this heat F equation, right? So the same as before, we're going to add this uh, block for the heat F equation. And what's going to happen here is that you're you're going to tell the solver what's going to happen in in two different domains. So the domain zero, the domain zero is going to be the all of the cells that are outside of the subdomain that you selected, right? So so you have your fluid domain, uh, and then you have a subdomain that you selected. So everything that's outside of your selection is going to be domain zero. And so for this, you want to set the source term to zero. And then the domain one is going to be everything that's inside the subdomain that you selected. So you know all the cells that's included in that file that, that you just uh, saved. And so for this one, you want to set the source term to one. And then obviously for both, you set you give some very small value for conductivity to turn off the diffusion. And then everything else is the same. You know you set zeros for all the uh, boundary conditions. So, so that's all you have to do for the configuration file. So once you have that, you could go ahead and run the simulation. Okay, let's have a look to see what the simulation result looks like. So this is where that pair of view state that we saved previously comes in handy. So I've loaded the state, and then on top of that, I've uh, also loaded the simulation results. And so the state that we saved before shows us where that clipped subdomain is. And so let me turn down the opacity of this so we can see through it. Okay, so here's what we selected as the subdomain. As we can see that, um, you know, what we're showing here is a temperature, which actually is our residence time. So this is in units of seconds. And so we can see that particle comes in here and before it enters that subdomain, uh, the, the clock doesn't start ticking. And so, you know, the residence time is zero. Uh, as soon as it enters the subdomain, it starts accumulating age. And so um, the sphere here uh, has a wider volume, and so the, you're going to accumulate more age. And so by the time you exit, um, you have a certain age, and, and that doesn't really change anymore. Um, and then on this side, obviously, the, this uh, further proportion of the sphere, and so you collect less age, and then so there's a lower temperature on this side. So that result also makes sense.